the unexpected happens and it catches you off guard because, well, it's unexpected. Yet everything will work out in God's providence. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. And I'm Gary. And we are staying in a little city park in Platteville, Wisconsin, because it's very hot and we needed air conditioning. So we needed to have a 30 amp. Yeah. Plus, it's also been smoky the last few days. Very smoky from the Canadian fires. Today's a little better. Tomorrow's supposed to be better yet. So, we found a really cute little park, and uh, it's behind us, and they've got a walking trail that goes all the way through it. So we thought we'd take you on the walk while we talk about two very unexpected things that happened to us recently, and um, how they happened, what the results were, what could have happened, <laughs> all those kinds of things, and how God helped us through it. And you won't believe how they turned out. Hope they inspire you. The first story is about our RV awning. Oh, there's a cardinal. The awning incident happened on the day that we had just finished taking the rest of the decals off of the RV and I had promised Gary's mom I would cut her hair and Gary was going to put the awning back up that, that had been shielding us and keeping us out of the sun and he was going to just kind of put things away and whatever. So I went in the house and started cutting Gary's mom's hair. And a little bit later, I went into the bathroom to get a mirror for her, and Gary was washing his hands, and I didn't think anything of it. I had to kind of have him move out of the way a little bit so I could get to where that mirror was. I had no idea what had just happened to him. He's going to tell you right now. <laughs> well, first of all, I didn't want to tell Orlean what exactly happened because I didn't want her to chop my mom's hair all up, and I didn't realize she was already done. So, well, while I, I was putting the awning up, there's a slide in one of the arms that's held in place by a rivet that came loose. Well, the rivet came loose and I was going to try to push it back in. It didn't work so well. I had to push it off the end. That's the only solution I could see at the time. So that meant that I would have to take the cap off the end thinking that the springs were all locked in place because the awning was out. I undid the cap and I pulled that off the end of the arm. Uh, the spring was not locked in place and it was, it, it suddenly just took off. It unwound rapidly and hammered against my, my uh, right hand. I had no clue what had happened until it stopped spinning and I dropped it, uh, I looked at my hand, my fingers were pointing the right directions, nothing was <laughs> nothing was, was uh, broken from what I could tell, there was no searing pains, just a bit of uh, scrapes on my arm. A bit. Yeah. yeah, well it was kind of a bloody mess for a yeah. while, <laughs> but I <laughs> washed it off and cleaned it up and learned a little bit about RV awnings. Well. It turned out good. It was just a scrape as some band-aids and stuff, uh, you know, uh, but the, big band-aids. Yeah, big band-aids and, <laughs> and so antibiotic creams and it uh, healed up. Now it's almost healed up. However, it could have been much worse. For one thing, the awning had been making a funny noise every time Gary would go to pull it out or take pull it back in each day. And the reason we do that, we don't leave it out overnight. We just don't. It's not a good thing to do. Storms can come up during the night. Winds can come up during the night. Even if you have, even if you have, um, thing, have it secured down, things can still happen. So we just take our awning and put it away every night. And it had been making this weird noise that didn't sound right. And I, I kept saying, "What's wrong with the awning?" And what would that have been? Well, the springs that coil up on the inside. There's always moisture that gets inside after some years it can get kind of squeaky and noisy and there's really 
I didn't know of any way to get inside to lubricate it and I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> so, so well, shaking when it when it spun loose that shook the rust off and cleaned things up a bit so it's not as noisy as it was. <laughs> Gary's brother Mel, thank you. Came over and helped. Gary was just gonna take the awning off. He was just he was I'm done with wreck it. it. He was just gonna he was <laughs> done with it. He was just gonna take it off. We, I was looking up prices and how much it would cost to replace it. I mean it's twenty three years old. It had gotten hit by hail last summer, and we have that taped where there's damage to it. Anyway. It still works. It um, still works, but Mel the, figured out how to recoil it. Well, how to put the cap back on, how to fix the rivet that came out. So part of the providence of God there, of course, was having a brother who would <laughs> be able to work through some of those things and have the time to do it. I uh, sure appreciate that. And, I mean, the know-how, all the things yeah. that he knew how to do, and we hadn't even, I mean, you were just in shock. You were you were standing there with an ice pack on your hand and on your arm, and yikes. And it could have been so much worse. And he could have broken his arm. He could have crushed his fingers. Well, it wouldn't have crushed him, but it might have messed him up. A lot of things could have happened. I didn't have my phone. It was in the RV <laughs> and the awning when I came outside the awning was on the ground halfway on the ground and halfway attached to the RV yeah. I'm like ho 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 okay so it could have turned out a lot worse and we're gonna talk more about the what-ifs at the end of this so please keep watching and you'll hear some more things that we aren't sharing right now the second thing that happened was our truck. We were going to my sister's near Green Bay for uh, a family gathering on a, a weekend just recently. We're gonna try and go to some shade here and hope we aren't gonna be too out of the way here for you to see what we're doing. Ah, there. Now we can see you better. <laughs> <laughs> and so we went to my we were on our way to my sister's and I said that I was gonna pick up some salads and we were gonna stop at the Costco closest to their home which was about not even quite half an hour from their house I had gone in the store to get some groceries Gary had decided to get gas while we were there <clears throat> and when I came out or when I was done when I was done checking out he was at the auto department trying to buy a new battery and I said why are we buying a new battery we just put one in the spring but he thought it was the battery that was causing it at first well you can't always know sometimes the battery goes bad shortly after you get it sometimes it'll last for 10 years sometimes not yeah so that was the quickest and easiest thing I could do so we bought that and then we couldn't get, you couldn't get the connectors off, the old one. Well, we looked at the age on the battery and I tried starting the truck up again that made this ugly noise. That's Horrible not a, noise. Not a battery noise. <laughs> so. And he determined it was the starter. So I called a brother-in-law and talked to him because he knows those things and asked him if he wanted to hear it. So I, I hit the key once more and he told me not to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like a starter. <laughs> that, that set us on a different course of action. So the battery went back, and we got our money back on that. Then the real fun started. This was on a Friday afternoon at 4.30 in the afternoon. You know anything about uh, car repair shops? You know they usually close by 5 o'clock on Fridays, and they don't open. A lot of them don't open until Monday mornings. The other downside is if you know how things are with repairing cars these days, it can take two to three weeks to even get into the shop. Which is what we were running into when Gary started making phone calls. He got uh, referrals from some of the guys at, at uh, Costco. Went to the tire desk and asked them if they had any ideas or suggestions. The first couple ended up being three weeks out. Uh, 
yeah, so th those didn't get anywhere on a Friday night. Uh, but we got a hold of one that said, the secretary said that she would find a starter first before anything else. And that was through Master Tech Auto. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, not only did they answer, <laughs> but she started looking for one for our 1998 Dodge Ram. It took three different places or four different places before she finally found one that had one. And uh, she was going to call a couple other ones just to see if she could get one delivered by Saturday morning. Well, uh, she called back and the earliest she could get one was for Saturday afternoon around 3.30. At first she said Monday, and then they, and then she said, "Can you get it to me sooner?" Yeah, and then they they said they could have it there by that after by Saturday afternoon. However, the shop wouldn't be open until Monday. Until Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, well, "Let me check with our mechanics and see. Maybe somebody will come in tomorrow." Elmer, thank you. She called. She said Elmer said he would do that. He would come. And, and uh, he would fix it up for He put the new starter in for us. But then I asked if we should have it towed to the shop. Well, Elmer, thank you. She said Elmer would come to the parking lot at Costco and put it in there. Oh. <laughs> that saved us a pile of money. Well, the, the grief of going and through another that. phone call and Everything. getting a tow truck. and. Uh. Uh, and the damage a tow truck could do. Hmm. Well, yeah. We got permission from Costco to leave the truck. We didn't want to leave the RV too. Now we had friends in Green Bay that we were going to see after we were at my sister's. We were going to be going to their place in Green Bay and they offered to come and pick us up and take us back to their place and let us stay with them. My sister offered the same thing. but I just didn't want to leave our RV in a Costco parking lot for a weekend. So my brother-in-law and sister have a fifth wheel RV, which means he has a fifth wheel hitch, hitch in his truck. In yeah. his truck. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Now the problem was how do we get the truck, which we can't start, apart from the RV so that he could hook his truck up to it. Fortunately, I then, uh, I, fortunately, I parked the truck and the RV in a spot where we had enough room to move the truck. That's a good point. He always does that. <laughs> and uh, we had enough horsepower, so to speak, to be able to push it out from underneath the RV, thanks to our brother-in-law's son. Yes, my <laughs> nephew. He he was able, Dave. Um, my brother-in-law drove our truck. He steered it with not being able to steer it because couldn't start it. And um, he had it in neutral. And then um, my nephew and I and Gary pushed our truck after we got it unhooked, pushed that our truck away so that Dave could bring his truck in to hook up the RV. And then we had to push our truck into a better spot than it was. <laughs> so it'd be out of the way from traffic. Orlean was amazed at just how light that truck was when she started pushing. I'm like, this is, <laughs> I thought it was gonna be really hard. I thought, how are we gonna push this? These guys are strong, or I, I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> so we got in the truck with my brother-in-law and my nephew, and he gave us a ride with our home behind. We parked on their property like we had planned to do for the reunion anyway. And then the next day, Gary got a ride back to Costco with our son, who was also at the reunion. And by the time they got there, Elmer had the starter replaced and fixed. <laughs> so all I had to do was get in the truck and follow him to the, to the shop so I could Pay the bill and they were right on with the amount that Heather said would would uh, be the cost of putting it in. It was about 400 and uh, appreciated it. Uh, everything worked out so well. Our weekend was rescued. 
our little jaunt up into Door County was rescued. And, and we'll be showing a video on that as soon as I can edit through about a thousand pictures and videos. <laughs> it's only been about a week and a half since that all happened. So we, if we were waiting for the others to have a clearance for us to get into the shop, We'd still, still be still sitting be in the Costco park, parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. we wouldn't be there, but uh, we'd, we would have had had it towed out. Uh, we'd still be sitting in your sister's driveway, and it would be, yeah. So. And we wouldn't have been able to hit. Well, we probably could have spent time with our friends because they would have come and picked us up. Things always work out. I guess yeah. that's the biggest thing about this video is that we want to bring up. What if Gary's arm had broken or he had crushed his fingers or mm -hmm. something um, I would have had to learn how to drive a fifth wheel I would have had to get over my fear of that uh, it would have probably changed some of our plans depending on how bad it might have gotten injured it might have changed our plans dramatically we might not have been able to go south this winter we might have had to completely change all our plans but God would have blessed it no matter what we're just glad he blessed it this way. Yes. <laughs> and as far as the the truck, same thing. You know, if 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 it had been a case where it had been a lot more expense or a lot more things wrong with it, and he wouldn't have been able to fix the starter in the parking lot, well, God would have provided for that too. So we. There's times when we just panic and we should know by now because I don't know how many stories we've done like this on our channel over the last six years. So many times that the right people at the right time, it Challenges just, that you don't know. You don't know. And, and when yeah. you don't know, you tend to assume the worst or you see it's impossible. It can't work out. Everything's ruined. Uh, but try all, not to go there. All things are possible through God. You will always make sure that there's a way out. We've shared the stories over the years of, of the things we knew about, the things that actually happened to us, but we don't know, and you don't know, how many times in a day or a, a week or a month or whatever that God has protected you and us from terrible things happening that we, didn't, we will never even know about. And we could probably count on, we, well, we would never be able to count the number of times that he's in his providence has taken care of us. It's just mind blowing. One of the things you can always count on besides taxes and death <laughs> <laughs> is that, that there are going to be more bad things that are going to happen as part of going down the road. The roads of faith. And we know that bad things happen. There are some really sad things that happen, some very troubling things that happen, that things that we go through in life. But there's always, you know, we can, there's been so many times that we could look back on some of those things years later and go, oh my gosh, if that hadn't happened, this wouldn't have happened. That would not have happened. We wouldn't have met this person. We wouldn't have been blessed by this. We wouldn't have been blessed by that. There's always a way that God works things out. Even when we're in our deepest, most troubling, scariest, most hopeless situations, God will help you. And that's the probably the biggest message of this of anything is that we have to trust that because he sees the bigger picture and we don't. There's a saw going somewhere. I hope you can't hear that. <laughs> So we just want to give a shout out to the heroes that helped us. Um, Mel, his brother, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, Dave, his son, my, my nephew, whose name is also Dave, <laughs> and our friends who offered to come and get us. That's another Dave and Karen. We really appreciated all of everybody did for us. And then the people at the shop. What was the name of the shop again? Give it a big shout out. Master Tech. Auto. Master Tech Auto in Green Bay, Wisconsin. If you ever need somebody, call them. And um, Heather was the one that helped us. We don't know if she was a secretary, if she owned the place, if she, if she was. As far as we're concerned, she runs the place. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she was not going to stop till she found that part. So that was pretty cool. 
and um, and then she did everything she could to get somebody to work on it. And we should so, probably also say thanks to Elmer. Elmer for coming out and doing all that. And he was a young guy. He had a yeah. family. I we think I don't know. He had a he had maybe his wife or girlfriend was with him. There was a lot of people involved in this that really helped us. But of course, God was the one that brought them all together to do that. So we really appreciated that. We thank the good Lord for that. Yes. Very much so. Yeah. All right. You probably have a lot of stories to tell, too. If you want to share some in your comments below, we'd really love to read about them. Just share something maybe recently that happened to you that you never thought would have an, a, a happy ending or a good ending the way it was going. I mean, we'd love to hear your stories, too. Check out our Facebook page for more uh, things on there that we don't always put in our videos. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit that red subscribe button down below and then a little bell is going to pop up. If you tap on the bell, ring the bell, then you'll be notified every time new videos come up. And if you don't, you won't know. Thanks for watching. Be watching for the Door County video and others. I've got so many in the works right now you wouldn't believe it. And until next time. God, God bless. bless.